Oni shanam be. Bloody time, neither. Andy! Lead out the helicopter. Thompson? Chopper to leader. Yeah, loud and clear, Harry. Over. All right, now, Kip, we're bottled up here. You've got to cut us apart out. I'll set over the first batch on the cover party right now. Make your approach and land the other side of the river. The other side of the river. We will come out to you. Repeat. We will come out to you. Over. Okay. Gotcha, Harry. Coming in now. Over. All right, Matt, get ready to move.
Thank you. Hurry, Grigsby. You presume. Adams. Sit down. Thank you. So, you telephoned. You got trouble. And you claim to have the uh, cure? Cut off the head behind it. Master Kit Thompson. <laughs> well, what do you know? Everything. And what do you say? You're proposing that Whitehall pays you to put paid to Thompson. In a nutshell. I don't wish to add insult to injury, but... To... The state of a man's health, Adams, is best determined in his head. You give him a reason and he'll recover. For the time being, anyway. Even from TB? I've been in and out of these places for years. I'm sure it gets worse every time. And certainly in the end it'll finish me. You want Thompson that badly? That badly. All right, you're on. The price is 13,000. 5,000 for me. 2,000 down, 3,000 on delivery. 2,000 each for the other four. Half now, half later. Less the, uh, the savings you'll be making on the people we leave behind. You have a deal. Oh, there's one question remains. Any time, Adams. Any time from tomorrow afternoon. I'll see you get everything you need. Oh, everything that is, except our blessing. Officially. <laughs> you don't know me from Adams. <laughs> Good luck. You think I'll need it? Do you? Yeah, I know it. Thompson may have turned into a murdering monster. But he's no mug. Grigsby? Me? Major Harry Grigsby. Uh, Coulson, sir. Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Okay. Transport, sir. I understood the discretion was to be the better part of our visit. Yes, sir. A fanfare of trumpets would have done less to advertise our arrival. Well, these were the vehicles I was ordered to use, sir. Yeah. Well, not to worry. It suits my purpose to start tongues wagging. Well? Uh, we've arranged quarters at the International. Hotel? Uh, yes, sir. Go on. Your men and their luggage will be taken there now. And me? I'll drive you to Blenheim House, sir. General Whiteley wants a few words. And may the best man win. Make hay while you can. <laughs> so far now, shut it! Sorry. <laughs> no. Let's <laughs> see. Oh. <laughs> Aye, we... oh, let's cut this out. We are not going on a picnic. Yes, Sergeant. All right, let's go and have those words with the general.
Yes. A man called for you. Come special. A man called Grigsby. Who? Grigsby. <sighs> okay, Harry. <laughs> okay. Nice little place you've got here. Yes, sir. If you'll just uh, take a seat here, sir. You'll inform the good general of my arrival. Quite. Lieutenant. Let's not only of that. Let's let him stew a while, nonsense, huh? General Whiteley will see you now, sir. Major Harry Grigsby, sir. Thank you, Colson. That'll be all. Sir. Take a seat. Pleasant trip, Major. <laughs> Come on now, General. You couldn't care less. So let's dispense with the shadow boxing and get down to the bloodletting. <coughs> you were saying? Whatever you feel about me and my men is not important. We're here to do a job, a job your men can't do. Correction, Mr. Grigsby. A job my men are not allowed to do. The situation here is defined quite simply. China takes something over a billion dollars in hard currency out of this colony each year. To the less hysterical minds in Peking, that income is a damn sight more important than booting us out. So we survive here in a state of razor-edged truce. Which at the moment is being endangered by the antics of the Red Guard under the guidance of friend Thompson. Precisely. And the crux of the problem is that Thompson is playing a hit-and-run game across the border. What else? Well, since neither we nor the Chinese are anxious to be caught militarily violating each other's territory, <laughs> Send for Grigsby and company. Whitehall works in mysterious ways, etc., etc. But as officer commanding the British forces here, I'm under orders to maintain the status quo. And no madcap mercenary... General, I'm going to have enough trouble nailing young Thompson. So I've got no time to trade insults or to listen to holier-than-thou lectures. Oh, I'm... I'm so sorry. I, I didn't realize. Not at all, my dear. Come in. Major Grigsby, my wife, Catherine. Come on. How do you do, Major? What was it, my dear? No, really, it's nothing no, that can't. Come along, come along. If it could wait. Indeed, it can. If you'll excuse me. Good day, Major. Your manners, Yes, sir. I know. I apologize. My excuse is that I've got more important things on my mind. Yes, I understand. No, General. That's something I doubt you'll ever do. But an understanding, that should be possible. As I've already said, I've got enough fight on my hands. Then we too had better try for a, an easy truce, eh, what? Deal. <laughs> Standing around smelling it. Bet you're wishing you were back in Brixton, Jamie, old mate. All right. 
And what he's entitled to is a bit of fun. Yeah, well. Yeah, well, that's it. You're locked. No more. Mac. Get him with it. Well, go on, start working. Royal. Do you mind if I ask something, sir? Go ahead. Do you think he's worth it all? Mac, we left a lot of bodies behind when we crawled out of that bombed out bloody township. I know a lot of them were gutter people, but they were under my command. And it was my trust in Thompson. He's worth it, Mac. He's well worth it. David. Good evening, Mrs. Whiteley. And what have you been doing with your day? Um, playing dog's body to a bunch of cutthroats and a gentleman named Harry Grigsby. Ah, yes, I've got it. Now, you must tell me all. I want to know the who, the what, and the why. <clears throat> you know what, mate? It's a racing bloody certainty. Somebody's going to cop something very dodgy living in this crab house. Mac. I'm going down to that village refugee place, see what I can find out. Get them set and ready for when I get back. We'll be done, sir. Depends. Oh? On what? On your position. I'm the superintendent here. Been at it long? Look, do you mind? Grigsby. Major H. Grigsby. Can you spot the odd man out? I'm sorry. Ah, oh, come on. The phony superintendent. The poor unfortunate bastard who really comes here to cause trouble. Now look, Major. What? Your behavior is quite out of bounds. These people are not here to be bullied. Right. For the most part. But what about the odd man out? The one who arrives with a sad and grateful smile on his face and a bomb in his pocket. Or are you saying that never really happens? It has occurred, but most infrequently, I assure you. All right, all right. They're all lily white. You speak their language? A little. Then you won't mind asking them a few questions for me. Questions about what, Major? Well, like what they know of the movements of a certain American called Thompson. What here is his hideouts are in? How many men he's got? Who is I'm his... I'm sorry. You're sorry about what? Those are the sort of questions I can't start asking. Why the hell not, Superintendent? Because, Major Grigsby. Yes? They smack of the same brand of tyranny. They've come here to escape. Look, good works, lady, wife of the officer commanding. I'm here to do a job of work. Murder for money? Can you really refer to that as a job? Yes, a job it is. And to get it done quickly, I need information. Which major you're not going to get by browbeating the weak and frightened.
I'll settle for this one. Stop it. Are you devoid of any sense of compassion? This, Mrs. Whiteley, is no orphan of the oppression. This is a gorilla. He'd like nothing better than to blow your head off. You're mad, Major. I'm also good at my work. Now can I have him? No. This man appears to be an imposter. Take him into custody. This man is a damn nuisance. You will kindly escort him out of the area. Yeah. Slung out of my ear. So where's that leave us? Up the creek, without any information. No clue at all, sir. No. So since we can't go hunting for him, we'll make him find us. Bullet bait. You got the mortar, Mac? All loaded up, sir. All right. We're moving out. Right. Let's go! here, Mac. Jackson, I'll go on alone. You take this route. If he comes after me, I'll fire a flare. But no flare, we stay put. Wait and pray. Okay. All right, Jackal, let's go. Raider 1 to Raider 2. Hear me, Mac. Raider 2 to Raider 1. Yes, sir. Over. All right, Mac. From here on, we walk. Be sure to keep your eyes skin for my flare. Over and out. Keep your head down. You bet. I've got all the holes I can use.
make any dumb moves, Jacko. Atta boy. Okay, now both of you, peel off all the iron. Nice and easy, huh? <laughs> the eggs too, Harry. Do I get a prize, Harry? I guess you get two, Kip. <laughs> You're not in any hurry, are you? You're not? Mm -mm. No, man. I got all the time in the world. Yeah, you want to make it last. <laughs> Take him away, you dummies. Exactly, are you doing here? I mean, like really doing. You don't know. You tell it. Occupational therapy. Yeah. That's just what I figured. Vengeance be mine, saith the outsmarted. Oh, Harry. Where's the percentage? Where's the paycheck? Where is the point? A solid night's sleep. You would have grabbed that bundle, too. No. There are limits. No, Harry. No. No limits. Preferences. Actually, I wish you'd stayed where you were. I wish you hadn't had to come after me. Of course, now that you're here, maybe... Maybe what? Come over onto your side? No. I'd never be able to turn my back. Why don't you just thumb the next plane out of here and stay out? No. That's not your speed. You really are all burned up with this you and me thing. Right? Dead right. Yeah. <laughs> you want to be burned or buried? It's your party, Kip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you, Einstein, get him out of here. You got no stomach for the show, Kip? Comes the time, Harry, it'll be me who squeezes the trigger. Comes the time. Oh, come on, Harry. You're not gonna try and kid old Kip that you and Jack go alone on this gig, are you? <laughs> and sooner or later, those sidekicks of yours are gonna come a-looking. <laughs> it's your neck.
that son of a bitch. Come on, let's get it. You just keep on coming, you bastard! the shanty then, sir. And here's to the next time. You all right, David? Yes, thank you, sir. Fine. One moment, yeah. Yes, thank you. For you, General. Telephone. Urgent. Damn. Oh, very well. Excuse me, my dear. Yes. Trouble, I'm afraid. Simply must run. No, no. No need for more than one meal to be ruined, eh, what? So sorry, my dear. See you later. David? Yes, ma'am. Are you desperately hungry? Well, no, not really. Not, not particularly. Then I'd like to go home. Is something wrong? No. I've no appetite. Give me an Irish, please. A large Jameson. Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> the man's making a spectacle of himself. Isn't he? Hey, watch it. That's my chair. Oh, hey! Well, I better do something about it. <laughs> Excuse me. Major? Barman, you'll have a drink. Yes, I really sir. think you've had enough, Major. You what? I said, Major, I really do think you've had enough. Say again. Yes. Come on, Major. Come on. <laughs> Stay down. Stay down, son.
morning, Major. Really? You come to sightsee or to spring me? Drunks, they only hold overnight. Headache, Major? <laughs> you should have seen the other fellow. The other three fellows. Ah, Commissioner Doyle. Major Harry Grigsby. So, it seems you gave Mr. Thompson quite a bashing yesterday. Yeah, just enough to keep matters even. Enough, according to intelligence, to send him scuttling back into China to call for reinforcements. This is where he's waiting? Wanchan village, yes. About 20 miles. More or less, yes. Can't be done. Why? Not over that terrain. Not even on foot, Major. Well, we could walk it, all right, Lieutenant. But blind? Through that landscape? Not a chance. Then, Major Grigsby, we must get you a pair of eyes. Is that what you're offering me? Don't be fooled by appearances, Major. Just a touch of dysentery. I asked for a guide dog, not a ghost. He's the only one we've got really knows the region. Now, with him, it's a worthwhile gamble. Either he takes his chances with you, or else he stays there until he snuffs it. Wrap him up. here tonight. Well, there's still plenty to deal that left, sir. Enough's enough. Whatever you say, sir. That's right. Sorry, sir. Get them organized. The gook, too. Mac. Let them bitch all they like. Early one morning, just as the sun was rising, I heard a maiden singing in the valley below. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh. You got anything to say? Let's keep it that way. All right, come on. Let's move out.
He must have heard us. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe we just called when he was out. Should we leave him a note, sir? <laughs> no. No, I think we'll just wait. doesn't want you. He doesn't want anybody. My dear. Absolutely delightful. Lovely. Thank you. Not at all. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Brandy, sir. Splendid. Yes, please. That'd round it off nicely. David? Uh, thank you, sir. Davis? Uh, I think, if you don't mind, I'll excuse myself. I. Why, of course, my dear. Thank you. Good night. Thank you for coming. Charles, old boy, shouldn't you... Uh... No, 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 no. Uh, touch tired, I think. Been overdoing things a bit, eh, one? As a dodo. Uh, it happens to the best of them, sir. Let that be his epitaph. Should I say a few words, sir? If that's your need, Mac. Well, just respect, sir. Words? So, we bury him, huh? You leave him just as he is. His work's not finished yet. Get him up on that path. Yes? May I come in, my dear? Yes. One for the road, eh? I'm sorry, keeping you in the lurch. Oh, not to worry, my dear. Can't be on top form all the time. No. Nothing I can do? No, Charles, there's nothing you can do. Yes, well, quick snifter and a good night shut eye, what? And tomorrow is another day. That's right. Hi, darling. Good night, Charles.
sure there's nothing I can do. Now, if Thompson comes up that path, he'll be here to greet him. And when this one is moved... Oh, we get the picture. He'll go off with a bang, Mac. He'll light up the sky. It's a good way to go. <laughs> uh, it's all right. I'll go out, Major. Mac! I've got to be the first one to see him.
Wilson? Yes. Hello? I see. Yes. Um, well, thank you very much for calling. Morning, David. Morning. Something wrong? Grigsby. Oh. Flunked it again. I, I just had one of his chaps on the blower. He's down at the Queen Mary Hospital. A bit touch and go, I gather. He isn't having the greatest of success, is he? No, nor the best of blooming luck. He seemed to have developed a soft spot. Well, I'd uh, better go and tell the general. Yes. some fruit. Thanks. Now that I'm here, I'm... I'm afraid I'm a little tongue-tied. that you'd been taken ill, and I... I came to see if there wasn't something I might do. I'm obliged. Yes, well, I, uh... Better be getting back. Well... What? You're not making things any easier for me. As I remember it, Mrs. Whiteley, on the occasion of our last meeting down among your refugees, I got the distinct impression that, at best, you thought rather badly of me. I did. Mrs. Whiteley, I make no excuse for what I am. Don't you try to turn me into something I'm not. I'm sorry. I... I'm not a refugee. I'd be grateful if you'd keep your grace and goodness for somebody else. There's only one reason I'll accept you being here. And what is that, Major? Because you want it to be. <coughs> I did. Why? I don't know. Okay. I suppose you're going to be in here for some time. Uh, uh, not too long. Six or seven days. But surely. Why? So quickly? Uh, the wonders of modern medicine. One day you're a dying man, the next day you're really full of antibiotics. And the next day you're alive and kicking again. And a few days convalescence and... Back to the bombs and the bullets and the boys. Yeah, something like that. Where will you go for your few days? Uh, well, suggestions. A place called... Uh, Emperor's heavens. You know it? Yes. Is it good? Beautiful. Sorry to interrupt. It's time to stick a needle in his backside. He takes some sort of strange pleasure out of it. Yes, it's called sadism. Well, I think perhaps it's time I was going. Get well. 
Thanks for coming. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, I'd say that was reason enough for staying alive. Sir? Give me another one of those, will you, please? Charles? Come in, my dear. Cutting it a bit fine, aren't you? Yes, I know. I'm sorry. Am I terribly late? Not to worry. As long as we put in an appearance. I'll be ready in no time. Oh, oh do you want one of these? Uh, no, thanks. Mm Yes? Well, come in, my dear. Yes, come in. Sorry, darling, almost forgot. Question of seat reservations. I promised to phone David before we left. I have to go to Singapore for the weekend, some conference about this withdrawal business. You'll be along. I'd really rather not, Charles, if, if you wouldn't mind. No, of course. Uh, any special reason? Well, I've been hoping to have a short holiday, somewhere quiet, away from the problems of refugees and Red Guard and officialdom. Well, yes, as you wish, my dear, of course. Uh, as you wish, I'll, um, I'll ring, um, uh, way downstairs. What? <laughs> Catherine Whiteley. Ah, yes. We have been expecting you. Oh, thank you. No, that's fine. Thank you. This way. your room. Do you like it? It's exquisite. somewhere to recommend. Yes. I suppose I could say something about fancy meeting you here. Mm-hmm. But since you'd hardly swallow that old line, let's just say I'm here because I wanted to be here. <laughs> now you ask why, don't you? Okay. Why? And I say that, Major. Harry. Oh? He's had some sort of gesture of acceptance. You were saying? Catherine. Or Kathy. But the whys and the wherefores are beyond my understanding. No comment, Harry? No, just one. Kate. I'm happy that we're both here.
<laughs> it's no good. I give in. This way, I'll just starve. Forget. Don't be so damn superior. I didn't say a word. Thank you. Where did you become so expert with chopsticks? Oh, here and there. Malaya, Korea. Anywhere where there's been a war to wage? Oh, that sounds like the bell for the first round of a fight I've been in before. It's an argument I can never win. Whatever happens, I come out looking bad. I'm either kill happy or I'm a hypocrite. I'm sorry, I didn't... I mean, is, is, is that the why and the wherefore of your being here, Kate? Is that the attraction? The fascination of the freak? You flatter yourself. Okay. You win, I lose. I'm not as good-looking as King Kong or as funny as Frankenstein. Oh, I don't know. I just tried to pack up and go. Go home. What stopped you? I wanted to stay. Wanted to. Want to. Some friends, too. <laughs> okay, now let's all sit down. Cool and easy. And have a nice, quiet conversation. What about? About you, me, about money, and the ways of making it. You have a proposition for us, Kim. 
You know it, baby. Old Harry's finished. Harry's sick. Harry's tired. Do you know it? And I know it. Harry is dead. Long live the king. You got it. Harry's got nothing left to offer. But I, I'm still in business and in the market. And I got, well, some heavy bread to lay on guys that got the right know-how. You interested? I've met all kinds of men. So you take the bloody biscuit. Terry? Kip. I wouldn't cross the road to piss on you if you were on fire. Okay, no sale. But you're not asking me, baby. No. The only question now is, do I let you leave? The answer to that is pointing straight into your stomach. You wouldn't be bluffing, would you? Yeah, I guess that does answer it. Up. Back to me. Backwards. Slowly. thing run loose. Have you even thought about what you'd be giving up, what you'd be getting in exchange? Endlessly. I know that the sensible and honorable thing would be to go back to my husband, but the honest thing would, would be to stay here with you. Have you thought about the cost? Yes. Price is your problem. Was. Was. You sure? Are you sure? Yes. Major, Major Biscuit. There's a man here asking for you. He's waiting on the terrace. Okay, thanks. Hello, sir. Mac. Hi, sir. <laughs> well, how is everything? Ah, oh, I'm doing just fine, sir. How about yourself? Oh, fine too, Mac. Getting fitter and fatter by the hour. That's more than can be said for Royal. Thompson got him a couple of nights back. That's bad, Mac. Yeah, he made it easy for him. Well, can we be expecting you back soon, sir? Oh, it's only that Mitchell and me had a bit short of cash and looking for the second half of the loot. Also, that young Coulson called, something about a cable from a man called Adam. Mac, I've had it. I'm all washed up, I'm through. Is that right, sir? Yeah, that's right, Mac. It's time to own up and admit that I'm 42 years very old. And what about Thompson, sir? Well, I guess he gets away with it, Mac. Major. Oh, you don't mind if I drop the Major in the sudden? All right, you can cut out the jokes. You can give them me straight. Right. Would this sudden decision that you've passed it have anything to do with the fact that you're here with that man Whiteley's wife? 
I'm sorry, sir. So, Mitchell and I pack. Well, you have to do what you have to do. It was a good team for a while, sir. Yeah, it was the best team, Mac. Aye. Wrong. When does he get back? Tomorrow. Why? He's a good man, Kate. Yes. Farewells will have to be said to his face. I know. Oh. Do you want me to come with you? No. Something I have to do on my own. It would help if you just say it, though. Say what? That you do love me. No, we're not. Good afternoon, ma'am. David. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye, Bob. See you in the office tomorrow. Oh, dear. How nice of you to come. Hello, oh, David. How have things been? Quiet, sir. Good, good. You'll join us for a spot of dinner, won't you? Yes, thank you, sir. We'll lead the way. Right. Oh, my darling, your holidays certainly put some color back in your cheeks. Enjoy yourself. Yes, very much. And you, did your talks go well? Tolerably. All things considered, I want. Something bothering you? Oh, come along. I'm leaving you, Charles. There you go. What on earth are you talking about? I know it sounds ridiculous, but I've fallen in love. I see. I'm sorry. I know that sounds hollow. May I ask the name of this um, other man? Harry Grigsby. That's 
preposterous. You can't be serious. Deadly serious. I mean your mind's made up? Yes. Yes, well, um, of course, I, um, I shan't stand in your way. Thank you. Obliged you for coming so promptly, Grigsby. Your young man Coulson was somewhat insistent, General. Yes, he he. You must forgive my fuzziness. I'm not quite myself. I. He didn't tell you uh, why I wanted to see you. No, but I was anxious that he should. I felt it right that I should uh, tell you myself. What the hell is happening here, General? Happened, Grigsby. Happened. Catherine is dead. Dead. Yes, dead. Catherine. Killed. Wow. Oh. We were driving back in the air base. What happened? Well, a bazooka shell meant for me. I'm so sorry. You? Well, yes, of course. For you. I'd already lost her. in touch with Mackenzie and Mitchell, wherever they are. Tell them I've changed my mind. Tell them to meet me at the shanty town right away. Mitchell? What the hell does that mean? He believed you first time. What I told him, Major. What you said. And you, Mac, what about you? 
I'm here, aren't I? Right. Well, let's go and get him. Harry, you lose and die. 